Why Frogs Are Wet by Judy Hawes and illustrated by Mary Ann Frazier. Ford, you inspired me. Frogs were here on earth before people. They were here before monkeys or cats. Frogs were here before giraffes. Frogs have been here for millions of years. Long before there were frogs, there were fish. The fish breathed through their gills. After a long time, new kinds of fish appeared. These new fish had lungs for breathing. They could live out of water for a little while. When their ponds dried up, they were able to flop about on land. They had to flop because they had no legs. Later, some kinds of fish appeared that had legs in place of fins. Now they could move on land or in the water. These were the forefathers of our frogs. Doesn't that remind you of some animals we've seen before? These are what scientists believe from fossils, what the original frog-like animals look like. A frog can live in the water and on the land. It is called an amphibian. Amphibian is from a Greek phrase that means having a double life. So one life in the water, one life on the land. The frog has wet skin. The wet skin holds the secret of its double life. The frog breathes through its skin. It also breathes through its lungs. In the fall and winter, frogs dig in the sand under streams and ponds. They stay there for months and months. They hardly breathe and their hearts slow down. You know what that is, right? Yeah. They hibernate. As soon as frogs come out in the spring from their hibernation, they hunt for mates. Some kinds of frogs live all their lives in water. Others live in damp woods or marshland, but all frogs return to lakes, ponds, or puddles to lay their eggs. The female frog lays the eggs, then the males fertilize. A clump of eggs looks like a large helping of tapioca pudding. The eggs hatch in four to 21 days. Frog babies just hatched are called tadpoles or polywogs. They look and swim like fish. They breathe through gills like fish. The gills look like fingers on either side of the tadpole's head. After a few days, the gills are covered over with skin. Then you can see hind legs growing. Next, the front legs appear. The tail is slowly taken into the body. Lungs for breathing on land grow inside the frog. Now the little frog is an amphibian. It can live on land, or in water. And this is kind of like the frog life cycle book that you made if you did it earlier this week. So you see the tadpoles and then they're starting to grow legs. They, we call them a froglet. And then the tail starts to shrink until finally they look like a frog that we're used to. There are more than 2,000 kinds of frogs. They are found all over the world. All of them have wet skin. Many frogs are green or brown, but there are frogs of almost every color. And look at all these colorful frogs they have on here. The blue poison dart frog. And this big one is called white's tree frog. And then here's some more. The orange one is called the tomato frog. Oh, that's a good name. And that little tiny yellow one is a poison dart frog. And then look at this, the painted reed frog. And this big fella, Asian horned frog.
There are big frogs and little frogs. A giant frog lives in Africa. It is 12 inches long, not counting its legs. I'm gonna show you how long that is. That would mean it was a frog who was this long, not including his legs. Wow, that's a big body for a frog. The largest frog in America is the bullfrog. Its body is six to eight inches long. The smallest frog in America is a tree frog called little grass frog. It is only half an inch long. So that would be about like that long. Oh my goodness, look, these are the actual sizes. So here's the biggest frog in the world. Here's our American bullfrog. And there's the tiny, that's the real size of the tiny little tree frog. Frogs were some of the first creatures on earth to have voices. They used them when they hunt for mates in the spring. When a frog sings, its throat looks like a blown up balloon. The voices of bullfrogs are deep and low. They seem to say, Juggerum, juggerum. Tree frogs have a high pitched song. It rings like distant bells. Other frog calls are grunts, squeaks, or squawks. Most female frogs do not sing, but they scream when they are frightened. <laughs> There's some different, and you see how they're showing you how they, when they're making their sound, they kind of bubble. Their chins kind of bubble out. Frogs are great jumpers. They can leap 10, 20, or 30 times their body length. They jump very fast and in zigzags. The frog jumps to get away from its enemies. Sometimes it jumps to catch food. There is a southern cricket frog jumping, and look who he's trying to get away from. Yeah, a venomous snake. When it looks for food, the frog does not jump about carelessly. It usually waits, motionless, for insects to fly within striking distance. It might sit on a branch, a lily pad, or a rock, or it may float in the water. Its big, bulging eyes can see in all directions. Frogs stare without blinking. They can protect their eyes from drying by shutting them halfway. They can still see because they can look right through their lower eyelids. And there's a picture of a frog watching. He looks like he's, he's staying very still to see if he can catch that dragonfly. And you see there he is with his eyes poking up above the level of the water. Frogs will eat anything that seems to be a living, moving insect. If the insect stops moving, the frog will pay no attention to it. Frogs will starve before they eat dead bugs. When the frog's staring eyes spot a victim within striking distance, the frog's tongue makes the catch. It seldom misses. This is a frog called a pickerel frog. And he seems to be looking at that cricket that's hopping around. I know how much the boys and girls in my class love a cricket. Ha ha. A frog's tongue is different from ours. It is attached to the front of its mouth. It folds back towards its throat. As a frog jumps for an insect, its tongue flips forward. The far end of the tongue has a sticky surface. This sticky end wraps around the insect. The insect sticks to the tongue and the tongue swings back into the frog's mouth. The frog throws the insect down its throat. All this takes less than a tenth of a second. That is incredibly fast. So I'm going to show you like right here, here he is looking at the bug. There's his tongue going out. And then you can see he's, his tongue is coming back into his mouth and then it's going down his throat and then he closes his mouth and he's ready to roll. Frogs catch insects that are in water, in the air, or on land. They come out to find food at twilight or on rainy and cloudy days. During the heat of the day, they hide under damp leaves or under the water. They have to keep their skin wet because they are amphibians. 
Never forget that frogs are amphibians. They can live in the water or on land, but only as long as their skin stays wet. And that's the end. And then they have some information for finding out more about frogs. And I know if you all listened to the YouTube video the other day about frogs, you have already heard a little bit about frogs and done the frog life cycle. But those are some fascinating things. And what was our fact in here of how many different kinds of frogs there are in the world? Did it say 2,000? I'm going to go back to that page and look. Another amphibian. I wish I had an index. There are more than 2,000 kinds of frogs in our world. That's a lot. Okay, thanks for joining me.